you have clicked or tapped onto the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video, the Monday Evening Edition. It's weather for weather geeks, and what a refreshing change we've had over the last 24 hours. Much more comfortable air, but this pattern going forward this week is going to be real back and forth between stormy days and nice days. One thing for sure, though, the kind of heat that we had last week won't be back anytime real soon. A week ago today, we had our first 90 of the week, of the season, of the year, but today's high of 80 came with lower dew points. By the way, we finished last week with five out of six days in the 90s. We got uh, robbed a little bit of a 90 degree temperature on Wednesday with some clouds around. If not for those clouds, we would have had six consecutive days in the 90s for the first time in almost 30 years. But wow, what a change over the last 24 hours. We especially noticed this change after daybreak this morning when the dew points really started to drop nicely compared to the seven o'clock hour Sunday evening. 14 degrees lower that dew point it is a beautiful beautiful evening and it'll be a great evening to enjoy the sunset and by the way the sunset from today through friday is as late as it gets around here we uh, have an 859 sunset officially in youngstown now depending on your exact location this can differ by a, a minute or so but 859 officially in youngstown and surrounding areas for the next four nights and then they start slipping the other way. We've already started to lose daylight, of course, mostly at the start of the day since the solstice last week. It's a matter of seconds. Uh, it'll become a matter of minutes, though, in a, in a you know a few weeks to a month or so, and the process really picks up as we go into the latter portions of summer and into fall, of course. Now, if you watched Weather for Weather Geeks last week, we talked about this little bit of a, an adjustment in our pattern this week that will allow for the possibility of some thunderstorm clusters to start cascading south and east. Our heat ridge is now centered over Texas and New Mexico. It was out here for a lot of last week, but it's kind of retreated or retrograded off to the west. This opens the door to a northwest flow that in the summertime sometimes spells clusters of thunderstorms, and uh, tonight's gonna be one of those nights. Already a severe thunderstorm watch out for parts of northern Minnesota, but there'll be additional watches that are issued all the way down into this zone uh, this evening and into the overnight tonight, expecting a big band of thunderstorms to erupt and cascade south and east in pretty classic summertime fashion. Will this be uh, the D word? Will it be a derecho? That's marginal. Uh, you know, to meet the, uh, the criteria for a derecho, it needs to be producing severe wind gusts consistently for about, I think the number's 240 miles um, with little uh, breaks. Uh, so it needs to be real consistent, those wind damage reports uh, and the wind gust reports of 58 miles per hour or greater. Whether this makes that criteria, that's borderline, but it doesn't matter if you call it a derecho or not. It's still going to have the same impacts. High-end severe weather threat, especially in this kind of tan color from Minneapolis to Chicago. Uh, this is through daybreak tomorrow, and then during the daylight hours tomorrow into the midday hours, the highest severe weather risk appears to be in southwestern Michigan, northern Indiana, and just south of Chicago. Now for us, that's the big question for a lot of the viewers of this video, of course, northeast Ohio and western PA. Odds are currently favoring this band to undergo quite a bit of weakening as it approaches right around midday. But can we guarantee it completely fizzles out? No, we can't do that just yet. Uh, these things are notoriously fickle and more of a nowcast situation than a forecast situation. In other words, it's really hard to forecast the behavior of these things more than six to 12 hours in advance. It's just beyond the scope of a lot of our weather modeling and a lot of our uh, meteorological prowess, if you will. Uh, these things can kind of have minds of their own a little bit and just sort of do what they want to do. And so this is one model depiction of the next several hours. And this is just one model depiction. Doesn't mean it's going to be exactly how it goes. But I think its overall idea is just about right. By about daybreak tomorrow, we have a band of storms from southwestern Michigan through Chicago and Milwaukee. Still probably fairly strong at this point. But as we go deeper into the daylight hours tomorrow, and this begins to outrun the best dynamics in the atmosphere, it should weaken quite a bit. So by the time this <clears throat> what's left of it rolls through northeast Ohio, northwest PA, maybe noon, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, something in that zone, um, you don't see much depicted here on the modeling, and while, again, I don't want to guarantee this is exactly the right answer, it's certainly a plausible solution uh, on a, you know, kind of the lower percentage chance side of things uh, is that this maintains its strength all the way through. I think that's a non-zero chance, but it's a low chance. 
odds are definitely higher in this idea that this undergoes quite a bit of weakening as it approaches right around midday tomorrow. The rest of the day should be just fine. And so uh, we get through whatever comes our way around midday and then the sun will be out for a lot of the rest of the afternoon. Now, our attention turns towards Wednesday and the setup for Wednesday with a cold front heading our way. And this looks like a pretty active day, especially in the afternoon Wednesday. That's probably when the majority of the showers and storms will push through. I think the overall severe weather risk may be higher to our east, out across parts of Pennsylvania, West Virginia, into parts of New York State but it's a non-zero severe weather risk around here. I think there could be some pretty good downpours though from time to time on Wednesday, especially in the afternoon. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of juice in the atmosphere. The uh, dew points are gonna rocket upwards Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, meaning we can squeeze out a lot of moisture out of these showers and storms Wednesday afternoon. But this front will usher in an air mass kind of like the one we have overhead right now. Thursday looks like a fine day. And while Friday will be warmer, it'll be with low humidity. So we're in kind of this back and forth pattern, nice now questionable Tuesday, not so nice Wednesday, but then nice Thursday, warm but low humidity Friday. And you'll notice my severe weather risk here on Saturday is definitely elevated, perhaps even more than the next couple of days. I do think the next front on Saturday may, the timing may be very favorable, atmospheric dynamics may be very favorable for at least some strong winds with any storms to kick off the weekend on Saturday. So another way to illustrate this back and forth is looking at the dew point trend over the next several days. <clears throat> The dew points especially go upwards tomorrow night into Wednesday, then we get a break Thursday, Friday, they shoot up again Saturday, then they probably lower on Sunday. It probably starts out pretty muggy Sunday morning, but by Sunday afternoon and Monday, we should be back in the drier air temporarily. I think we swing the other direction as we get closer to the 4th of July. And you notice over the next 10 days, 90s are not particularly likely over the next week. High water mark, probably the middle, maybe upper 80s in some spots. But as we get closer to July 4th, uh, the modeling is pretty consistent that it's going to get pretty warm. Now, you know, take any forecast like this with a grain of salt 9, 10 days, 10 days away as far as the specifics. Can we tell you it's going to rain on the 4th of July or anything like that? No, we can't do that this far out. But we can point to the trends, and the trends definitely do look pretty warm in the run-up to the holiday in early July. And overall, remember from last week, we talked about the July forecast is looking pretty toasty across our part of the country. It's July, it should be toasty, but I mean, compared to the average, it does look like a warm July for not only us here locally, but much of the country as well. That'll do it for me on weather for Weather Geeks. I'll have updates on tomorrow's storm potential and much, much more on social media throughout the evening and then tonight on 21 News at 11 and early risers. Check out Jody's forecast tomorrow morning on WFMJ Today, bright and early, starting at 5 a.m.